Uh, go ahead, Mr. Brock, for five minutes. Ms. Reza, over a year ago, in fact, February 22nd, 2023, this committee received a letter from your assistant DM, Policy Planning and Communications, Mr. Irechi, concluding a first tranche of documents that had been ordered by this committee. In that letter, your department promised that there would be more documents to come and promised that a second tranche would arrive well over a year ago, March the 3rd, 2023. Who directed your department not to provide these documents to the committee within that time frame? Thank you very much for the question. I believe that the work is still underway. There's about 20 to 40,000 pages that need to be translated and collated and the um, minimum redactions being done. I do believe they're on their way to you. And you didn't see fit to update this committee? I apologize. I should have started with that. Okay. Can we have another tranche of documents delivered to this committee within three weeks? I will do my uh, utmost to do that, yes. Okay. Uh, you referred three IT companies uh, to the RCMP regarding fraudulent contracting, a uh, value of close to $5 million, with a time frame of 2018 to 2022. Who are they? Thank you very much for the question. Just for precision, they're actual resources. So they're the consultants or the IT specialists that... Yeah, but who are they? I'm going to have to turn to Madame Poulain, who has the okay. oversight. Madame Poulain, Merci identity, la... please. Merci pour la question. Thank you for the question. As uh, the de Deputy Minister said, these are individuals. They were the ones who were referred to the RCMP to maintain the integrity of the RCMP. We cannot provide the names of those resources. Thank you is subject to an RCMP investigation and uh, an argument could have been made that we are preser preserving their integrity. There is, there's still a presumption of innocence. People get identified every single day in this country when they're charged with a criminal offense. I'll ask you again, will you identify those three IT companies that have been referred to the RCMP? I uh, internally and we'll see what we can do in order to provide those names. Can you provide some context as to the size of those companies? We don't, at this point, GC Strategies, a small two-person company, fleecing Canadian taxpayers for close to $60 million, all the way now to McKenzie, the largest strategy consulting firm in the world with 30,000 consultants across 65 countries again, potentially under RCMP investigation. So what are the sizes of the companies under investigation now? Let me just start just for clarity. These are individuals. So how this came to light is that there would be maybe um, an individual working for two different companies and charging the Crown for the same time. So it's not really about the companies at this time. It's about the individual consultants working. So those names have been referred to the RCMP for criminal proceedings. And I'm going to stop here and swivel for a moment. Okay. Uh, about a month ago, we heard from your minister, Anon, sorry, Duclos, and Minister Anon, that this was only the first tranche of potential fraudulent activity against the Canadian taxpayer. How many waves, how many tranches can the Canadian public expect to, to hear about? Uh, thank you for the question. Let me start. First off, this is a new data analytical capacity. I'm not concerned about so that, Ms. Reza. Ms. Uh, Ms. Reza, the question is very specific. How many other tranches, how many other waves of further criminal investigations can we expect? We got the impression from your minister and Minister Anon that there was going to be a review of all the contractors who have been potentially subject to investigations uh, by the RCMP, investigations by the, the Auditor General. We know that there's 635 similar IT middlemen operating in the same capacity as GC Strategies. Are all of those 635 IT middlemen being, being investigated for, for, for potential uh, fraudulent activities? Thank you for the question. The investigations are targeting individuals who are awarded uh, several contracts in different firms. At the end of March, we also announced that we are stepping up data analysis. 
it is likely that we may obtain other results concerning individuals, consultants that are recruited by prime contractors and can bill the federal government for work on many or multiple contracts. Thank you very much. Mr. Shawari, order, please. Chair. Sorry, Mr. Genos. Yeah, Chair, during Mr. Brock's round of questions, he put a very direct question to the witness regarding the names of companies. Uh, the witness uh, indicated that uh, she didn't want to provide an answer. Uh, that's lovely, but we are a parliamentary committee, and we have a history of using the tools that the House uh, provides us with to insist on answers. Uh, so uh, I would, uh, uh, in, in respect of those rules, like you to put the question to the witness chair uh, with the witness understanding that we expect an answer on the question uh, in order to not be in contempt of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Genuas. And, and it's a good point, um, colleagues. This is the exact same issue we had with Mr. Firth, where very clear direct answers or questions were put, and he refused to answer. And I'm not saying we're going down the same path as Mr. Firth, but a very clear question was provided, and I think the committee deserves a very clear answer. If you are going to provide it to us in writing, the name of the resources, that will be acceptable to us, I think, the committee. Je répète ma réponse. Je vais consulter. Let me repeat. I carried out internal consultations, and we did everything we could while respecting legal requirements and privacy requirements to provide names to the committee. It's not that we don't want to answer. To their I'm sorry, but we've been through this repeatedly. We've had the law clerk with us. We, sorry, Mr. Genuas, I have the floor. We've been through this repeatedly with various departments, yourself included. This committee and parliament supersedes privacy law. It was a very clear question. We would just like, you know, again, I think it was three resources you mentioned, three companies. I think after everything we've seen with GC and this report, I think it's fair to ask that you do provide it to us so we can avoid perhaps the issue Mr. Genuis is referring to. Can you do that for us, Ms. Reza? I certainly can. I just want to add a footnote to this. I believe that there's a production order, and this is probably part of the hesitancy, so we will come back with the names understanding that. Okay. Um, Sorry, point, I, point, I just, point of order. No, let me... Let okay. me I, I think the question is pretty clear, and my request is that this is provided. I don't think we wish it to be part of the production order if you could provide it separately, as it's been requested by Mr. Brock. And that would be wonderful. Thank you. So I apologize. I'm saying that those names are under a production order right now for the RCMP, but we're going to come back to you. I wasn't proposing anything else. Thank you. When, okay, when can we get that information then, please? Well, We'll try over the next few days to see exactly what the assessment is and provide it as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Genos, Mr. Brock has the floor. Again, I don't believe the deputy minister truly appreciates the role of parliamentary committees. As the chair has indicated, privacy is trumped by this committee. The fact that you received a production order by the RCMP for the identity of those three sources does not in any way allow you to prevent this committee from receiving those names. There is no legal impediment for you to deliver those names to this committee. The issue of privacy is not relevant. And as I've indicated already, yeah. every Brock, single just, person... Mr. Brock, I'm just going to interrupt you there. Yes. I, I think I've been clear... We'll say by Friday, please provide this information, as been requested by Mr. Yes. Brock, and provided in writing to our clerk. And Point of order, Chair, are the witnesses committing to provide that information or to come back with no, some further thoughts on whether or not? They will provide the information that Mr. Brock has requested by this Friday. The committee agrees to that, to, to, to require that. Okay, good. Wonderful. Uh, Apologize. 